want you to hit me as hard as you can. Despite 10 years of consistently bad reviews, Michael Bay's cinematic adaptations of Transformers continue to march forward, with Mark Wahlberg reuniting with Optimus Prime and the gang to punch more robots and blow up more buildings in Transformers The Last Night. And you may be saying, Jesse, this is the perfect opportunity for you to tear apart one of these shitty Transformers sequels in your next review. And I respond by saying that every bad movie critic has got to know his limitations, and I draw my line at two and a half hours of Michael Bay seizure editing and Shia LaBeouf's jackal noises. Besides, I stopped following the series after the first one, and I learn everything I need to know about these sequels by watching the reviews. They have a robot, a giant robot with giant balls. This movie sucks, big, floppy, venereal, diseased, fucking <laughs> dick. If you are a person who has more than two friends, two or more friends that enjoy these films, you need a new group of friends. <laughs> so I shall instead look at another 80s creative property involving robots, which I have far more affection for, and its name is Robocop. Yes, the original 1987 Robocop left one hell of an impression upon its release. A sharp satire of the Reagan era, an unapologetically gory action flick, and the big Hollywood break for director Paul Verhoeven. And even though Verhoeven didn't return for Robocop 2, that sequel still made a solid chunk of money at the box office, despite bad reviews. But things all went terribly wrong with the third and final installment, Robocop 3. For one thing, comic book legend Frank Miller came back to write the script, after his work on the second movie was largely discarded only to have the studio fuck over his script even worse than last time. On top of that, Peter Weller was too busy starring in David Cronenberg's Naked Lunch to reprise the role of Robocop. And finally, Orion Pictures declared bankruptcy and delayed the release of Robocop 3 for over a year, when it was finally released to pitiful box office and abysmal reviews, which killed the career of famous B-movie director Fred Decker and shut down the Robocop series. But I loved all the installments of the Robocop trilogy back in the day when I was a kid, so I'm up for giving this third one another shot. I mean, I know I'll be okay. After all, Frank Miller came out of this ordeal live, and he has turned out just fine. Holy hell, what happened to you, Frank? You look like you got bitten during a full moon by the hobo from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So we open once again in the city of Detroit in the near future, where Omni Consumer Products is now on the verge of collapse under the direction of their new CEO, played by Rip Torn, with their plans to build Delta City held up and the company about to go bankrupt. It can't be that bad. Are you there? Every corporation goes through this sort of thing. <laughs> It's funny how this was also happening in real life to the studio behind this movie. But anyway, the company recruits an armed force of soldiers known as rehabs who relocate the citizens of old Detroit to rehabilitation centers so as to make way for construction on Delta City. And seeing as the guy leading them has gray hair, wears a gray suit, and speaks with a British accent, I'm gonna take a guess and say that these guys are up to no, no good. good. But the rehabs have to deal with an underground resistance group made up of Detective Wims from The Shield, Milton from Office Space, and Mr. Kruger from Seinfeld. It's like a version of the Expendables made up of those guys you remember from that show. You know who I'm talking about. And when they steal some guns from a police armory, they get pursued by the man once known as Officer Alex Murphy, but now known as Robocop, and now being played by Robert John Burke. You know, he was that guy you remember being in that movie, you know, you've seen him before. But Murphy leaves the pursuit to help out his partner Lewis, yet again played by Nancy Allen, when she gets stuck with a perp in the bad part of town. Sit tight, people, backup's coming. Sit tight? Hey, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even be here, you dumb broad. I'll make you a deal, tough guy. You wanna eat the tie, keep it up. Well, joke's on you, toots, because my tie happens to be made of fruit-striped gum. Ow! I'm Andrew Dice Clay for some reason. However, he and Lewis soon cross paths again with the resistance, when the cops find a group of innocent civilians hiding out in a church, and when the rehabs step in to round up the civilians, Murphy and Lewis stand in their way. Back off, or there will be trouble. Now you're talking, Murphy. If you want to get in there, you're going to have to shoot through us. I don't have a huge problem with that. Get them for me. Promise me. 
I promise. Well, I see Nancy Allen has pulled the classic Hollywood strategy of fine, I'll come back for your stupid sequel as long as you kill me off in the first quarter of the movie. Otherwise known as Fick Buff Isala Ikamoy Tif Kuotum. For example, see Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween 8, James Marsden in X-Men 3, or Channing Tatum in G.I. Joe 2. So now Robocop is blamed for Lewis's death and must hide out underground with the Resistance, but he's ended up taking too much damage and says he needs to be repaired by one of the scientists who created Robocop, Dr. Marie Lazarus, played by Jill Hennessy. Ah, so the doctor who can bring Robocop back from the dead is named after the dude that Jesus brought back from the dead. Subtle. And this means that Robocop is out of commission for nearly a half hour of the movie that bears his name, with most of the movie centering around a little orphan brat named Nico, which brings up the big problem of this sequel. Two letters, one number, PG-13. By 1993, Robocop had become big among a younger audience, with video games, action figures, and a goddamn animated series. Two goddamn animated series, based off of this movie. So now Orion Pictures has decided to fully embrace the kitty demographic and give Robocop a little girl sidekick. And it is a kick in the dick to Paul Verhoeven. Not only does this girl hack into an Ed 209 and make him act like a puppy, I am now authorized to be loyal as a puppy. But she also falls asleep in Robocop's lap and he starts to stroke her hair like she's a goddamn kitty. Her voice is... crank up the ridiculousness even harder when the Japanese corporation that has bought out Omnicore decides to take care of Robocop themselves by sending their new ninja android over to America known as Otomo. And not only does Otomo cut Robocop down the size in a samurai sword fight, but his face gets permanently contorted into an evil grin in the flick's final fight scene. <laughs> Look at this asshole. He looks like he switched over to the Nicolas Cage in face-off setting. Then they bring in a second Otomo robot to bring down Robocop. And the little orphan girl hacks into the two robots so she can make them bring each other down like they were Will Ferrell and John C. Riley fighting over the drum set in Step Brothers. <laughs> So yeah, watching a Robocop movie that doesn't have extreme gore is like when they edit Garfield out of a Garfield comic strip. It feels like something's missing. And to make a Robocop sequel that appeals to an audience that isn't even supposed to be watching Robocop in the first place, though we did watch it on VHS a lot, that's just plain insulting. But on an awfully good level, it does remain entertaining. Even though he's no Peter Weller, Robert John Burke does a fine job playing Robocop. Plus, it's good to see Nancy Allen back as Lewis again, even if only for a short while. And it's fun to spot such recognizable character actors as Bradley Whitford and Jeff Garland from Curb Your Enthusiasm. And the couple of commercial parodies they have in this one are pretty amusing. But that certainly doesn't make this movie any less of a disgrace to the name of Robocop. Just because the Terminator got away with adding a wisecracking kid does not mean that this franchise can. I mean, I thought the name of this movie was Robocop 3, not Robocop and a half. <laughs> Drunk or sober, you're coming with me. So I can sentence you to some hard time of playing another round of the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time Robocop shoots off his gun. Don't. I would say that is the silliest thing that I've ever seen Robocop do, but sadly it isn't. Oh, not the hen fry the chicken. You see something else explode. Explosion! Murphy has another dream or flashback. Murphy, it's you. Alex, I thought you'd never get home. And apparently, one of Murphy's fondest memories before he died was that time he watched Michael Jackson's black or white music video. You see something related to Christmas in the background. Well, since this movie set around Christmas, I guess it means we actually did get that Robocop Christmas special after all. Thanks, Robocop. You saved Christmas. Aww. 
and take a double shot for the two times Robocop says the phrase, I've been better. I've been better. Trust me, Murphy, I know damn well you've been better. Then take another double shot when you see the reappearance of Bixby Snyder. I'll buy that for a dollar. By the way, did you know that they tried hiring that dude to be the commercial spokesman for Dollar Tree? Unfortunately, things didn't pan out because of how they had to modify his catchphrase. Dollar Tree. I'd buy that for a dollar and 23 cents when you add tax. And on the nudie watch, seeing as this Robocop cuts back on the blood, you shouldn't be surprised to hear it cuts back on the nudity as well. So for no reason whatsoever, enjoy another weird foreign commercial with Robocop in it. You for you for you Robocop Seriously, Asia, what the hell was your obsession with having Robocop be your food salesman? <laughs> On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, Robocop 3 manages to be just about as corny as your average episode of Robocop the series, and drains its power level to a 7 out of 10. Thank god they never made the mistake of doing a PG-13 Robocop movie ever again. <laughs> I'm Jesse Shade for JoeBlow.com, and how come that guy who did the Kickstarter for that Robocop statue in Detroit ends up getting all his money, yet my Kickstarter for an Otomo statue in Detroit makes absolutely nothing? I, I just don't know what I did wrong, guys, and I guess I'll never find out. Thank you.